Hey everybody, it's Grant from Grant Bakes, and it's Saturday and I want some sourdough bread, but I haven't been feeding my starter. It's still cold and in the fridge. So I'm gonna show you how I make a same day sourdough. I'm gonna feed the starter today and I'm gonna bake the bread tonight. So everything in the same day, same day sourdough. Here we go. I wanted to be able to feed my starter and make it double in size really quickly because I don't have a lot of time to get this bread done. So what I did about four hours ago, it was eight o'clock when I fed my starter, it's now just a little after 12, is I fed my starter. I had 100 grams of leftover sourdough starter in here from the fridge. I fed that 100 grams of water and 100 grams of flour, and I popped it into the microwave, actually. What I did first was I boiled about just a cup of water in the microwave, got it really hot, and that made a nice steamy environment in here. And then I put the jar of sourdough in here to kind of soak up the warm atmosphere. So in four hours, it completely doubled in size and it's now ready to use. Okay, I've got all my stuff together. I've got my digital scale to weigh the ingredients. I've got my mixing bowl, some bread flour, and I'm gonna add a little bit of just whole grain wheat flour to the recipe as well. Then I've got water and salt. In order to fit this bread into one day's time, I'm actually gonna use some warm water, which I don't usually do. I usually just use water straight from the tap or at about room temperature, but I want the bread to rise a little faster than normal. So I'm using water that I've measured to be exactly 91 degrees Fahrenheit. I was shooting for 90, but I went a little bit over. So it looks like that's 33 degrees Celsius. So if you do want your bread to rise a little faster, try to use water that's about 90 degrees or a little bit warm to the touch. That'll help the dough rise even faster because the dough is a little warmer. Okay, let's go in with 300 grams of water. Then straight to the bowl, 10 grams of salt. Then add 100 grams of sourdough starter that has doubled in size. Then I'm gonna add just 50 grams of whole wheat flour. It's just gonna be a portion of the total amount of flour. And then I'm gonna go up to 450 grams with this bread flour. So the total flour is gonna be 450 grams, 50 grams of whole wheat, and 400 grams of bread flour. There we go. Then I'm gonna mix all of this together to form just kind of a shaggy dough. So just mix this all together, all together in one bowl. I don't usually do an auto lease. I know a lot of people like to soak the flour and water together for about an hour or two before they add their starter and their salt, but I tend to find that just mixing it all together at the beginning provides a really great, or produces a really great result, and I don't really notice that much of a difference in the final loaf of bread. So I usually skip those kind of steps, and it works for me. So just mix this all together, trying to get rid of any little dry bits of flour that are sticking to the bowl, just so it comes together. There we go. Then when everything comes together like that, just cover it up and then move your dough into the oven. Letting your dough rise in a turned off oven with the oven light on is just a really great spot to put your dough if you want it to rise a little bit faster. The oven is gonna keep a little bit of a warmer temperature in there. It's an enclosed space and there's a light bulb. So it's gonna be a little warmer than if you just keep it out on the counter. So the bulk fermentation or the first rise has officially started. Just keep your dough in here with the oven closed for 30 minutes. <laughs> So it's about 12.30 now. My idea is I'm gonna let this dough rise for about five hours in the oven with the light turned on. And I'm gonna give it three sets of stretch and folds during that time. So in 30 minutes, we're gonna give it its first set of folds. Okay, I just took this dough out 
of the turned off oven and I'm gonna give it its first set of stretch and folds. Just simply grab an edge of the dough, pull it up over the center, grab the next edge or corner of the dough, pull it up over the center. And I just keep going around the bowl, folding it over itself, stretching and folding, stretching and folding, just like this. Definitely smooths out the dough. Now the dough is a lot less shaggy and a lot more easy to handle. It's a lot smoother, a lot silkier. And that's just gonna keep improving in the next two sets of stretch and folds. Okay, you can keep your dough in the same mixing bowl and put it back in the oven if you want to, but I like this clear glass container. At this point, I'm gonna move the dough into this clear-sided glass Ziploc brand container just so I can see it grow and I can see bubbles form along the sides or through the sides of the container. So that's why I like the glass container for this. I'll try to link to a product similar to this one in the video description as well. First, just add a little bit of oil to the container so that the dough doesn't stick to the sides. Then just grab the dough, move it in there. And so you notice the smooth side is on bottom and the seam side is on top. So when you do stretch and folds, you'll just go like that and keep the seams right on top. So just pop the lid back on and then put this into the oven with that light turned on and let it rest for another 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes later, time for stretch and fold number two. Keep going around the dough once or twice around the dough, I guess, until you've got a nice smooth ball of dough. And again, the seam should be on top and the bottom will be smoother. Haven't really seen any like bubbles or anything on the dough through the glass yet but hopefully we'll see that later through the bulk fermentation. So just let this rise for another 30 minutes and then give it another and final set of stretch and folds. All right, 30 minutes later and it's time for the last set of stretch and folds. Kind of being a little bit gentler with the dough this time around because it is starting to fill up with air. I can feel it getting a little bit lighter. I'm seeing some signs of fermentation. I'm seeing some little bubbles, I'm seeing bubbles here and there, and that's a good thing. So I'm trying not to knock those bubbles out, handling the dough a little bit lighter. And I'm just gonna go about one time around the dough this time. I think that's good. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip the dough over so it's seam side down and the smooth side is now on top. You can see it's getting a little puffier. And I said I wanted this to bulk ferment for five hours total. So it's been going for about an hour and a half now. And so that means I need to let it rest for three and a half more hours. That'll take me to about 5.30 p.m. So I'm just gonna pop this into the oven and then 
at 5.30 p.m. I'll take it out and see how much it's risen. Okay, it's 5.30. This has been bulk fermenting for five hours now. And here's what I think. If I wasn't trying to bake this on the same day, I'd probably let this keep bulk fermenting for a few more hours. It's just not quite where I want it to be. I'd like it to be a little bit puffier and I'd like to see, let's see if you can see anything there. I'd like to see more bubbles on the side. Um, it's just a little bit less proofed than I usually like it to be. But I think I can make up for it being slightly under fermented now by shaping it and letting it do its final proof a little bit longer. So probably a two hour final proof at room temperature. So I'm just gonna pre-shape this dough now into a ball and let it rest for another half hour before I give it its final shape. And I stopped pre-shaping with any flour on the counter because I just think it's kind of unnecessary. And once you get a little bit better at handling dough, you'll find that the flour is kind of annoying, I think. So I'm just gonna put the dough down with the seam side down and the smooth side up. And I'm just gonna shape it into a ball kind of lightly with this bench scraper. If you do find it easier to put flour down on the counter and pre-shape your dough that way, that's totally fine. This way just wastes a little bit less flour. So just loosely shape it into a ball and I'm gonna let this rest for just a half hour and then I'm gonna give it its final shape. By the way, I also used to cover up my dough when it was bench resting between the pre-shape and the final shape, but I've just been leaving it uncovered the last couple times because I've seen so many videos of professional bakeries doing this. They just pre-shape all their dough into balls and then they leave it uncovered until they give it the final shape. So I figured if they leave them uncovered, so will I. One cool benefit of not covering your dough while it's resting here on the bench is that when you give your dough its final shape, it'll be less likely to stick to the banneton basket because there's a little skin that's formed on the dough while it's resting here. The air is hitting it, creating just kind of a protective layer around the dough. So it's gonna be less likely to stick to the basket after you shape it. So I'm gonna let this sit here for a half hour and I'll be back to give it its final shape. I'm just gonna dust the banneton basket with a little bit of rice flour. This is what I like to use. You could use whole wheat flour, just bread flour as well. And I'm gonna dust the top of the dough just with a little bit of flour and then flip it over. Okay, this is my tried and true shaping technique for shaping a batard or an oval shaped loaf. I pretty much just make a rectangle out of the dough and then just kind of imagine there's a line down the center. I'm gonna take one side of the dough, flip it over. I guess I go over that line and over a f about a third, folding it kind of like a letter. Then I fold the other side over that side. Okay. Then I roll the dough into itself rolling it tightly and there you go now there's tension running across the dough this way so that when you score the dough later it'll puff up nice and big in the oven that's how i like to shape a batard uh, there's a bunch of different ways but this was the first way i ever found that produced consistent results for me so that's why i shape batards this way just tuck the side under Tuck that flap under on the other side. There we go. And then just pop the dough seam side up, so flip it over, into the banneton basket. Now I am going to top this with a tiny bit of rice flour and cover it up. And then I'm going to just let that proof here on the counter for two hours before I bake it. Then about a half hour before you're ready to bake, go ahead and preheat your oven as high as it'll go, or about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And make sure you have your Dutch oven or your trusty Challenger bread pan inside the oven as it's preheating. 
Okay, ready to bake this. I'm afraid it might be a little bit underproofed, but when I poke my finger into the dough, it springs back slowly, so that's telling me it's probably all right. I'm gonna go ahead and bake this off. Just gonna dust my peel a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna brush off the excess flour on top of the dough. And I'm gonna score this from end to end. There we go. Hopefully that'll make a nice ear when it puffs up in the oven. And into the oven it goes. And bake that with with the lid on for 20 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, after 20 minutes, I took the lid off just to release the steam and it's looking pretty good. It got a really nice ear. It still could have been underproofed and look really good, uh, but we'll see how it looks later. For now, I'm gonna put this back in the oven with the lid off and let it continue baking for another 15 minutes. All right, 15 minutes later, ready to pull this out of the oven. Since it is getting late and I am running out of patience, I am just gonna let this cool for about 30 minutes. It won't be fully cooled, uh, but I'm just gonna cut into this in a half hour and grab me a slice of bread. All right, same day sourdough bread. It's getting late, so I'm gonna slice in and see how this looks on the inside. And I'll see how it tastes. All right, it's actually looking really good. It's looking a lot better than I was expecting. It might be a little bit underproofed. You see there's a big hole there, uh, but it doesn't have that really underproofed look uh, that happens when you rush through the bulk fermentation. And so I think this is a success. Let me cut off a slice and see how it tastes. There's a slice. Mm. Yeah, this is really, really good. It's just as good as any, any sourdough I've made before. Honestly, the flavor is, is all there. It's all that it should be. It might not be as sour as some other loaves I've made, uh, but usually my sourdough bread is not all that sour anyway, so I really like it. Mm. A late night slice of sourdough. Overall, I like the ability of being able to make sourdough from start to finish all in one day, but my usual method of feeding the starter at night, mixing the dough in the morning, and then using the fridge for a long cold fermentation, I think that's what I'm gonna stick with uh, most of the time. But if you have kind of a time crunch, you are able to make sourdough all in the same day if you want to, and it's a great loaf of bread. So give this recipe and method a try for same day sourdough. And if you wanna make any other of my recipes or check out any of my other videos, uh, I have a great one for you right here. Check it out. See ya.